I recently developed an issue with the y-axis on my printer. Today I'm going to show how I fixed that and I'm going to do a few mods while I'm there. Hello and welcome to CS Wilson Prints. I'm CS Wilson. So the issue that I'm currently experiencing is a busted rail in the y-axis. On my printer, the bed moves back and forth in the y direction using wheels that clamp onto rails that are actually 2020 aluminum extrusions. One of these extrusions have damaged and cracked, which has created a sharp, jagged edge, which in turn has ruined the wheel. Now, there are two ways to fix this problem. One way, obviously, would be to just replace the extrusion with a new one and also replace the damaged wheel. The second option is to just rotate the damaged extrusion 90 degrees so you're using the fresh, new, hopefully undamaged sides of the extrusion and also replace the wheel. Unfortunately, in my case, this extrusion was damaged several months ago in the same way and I've already rotated it. So I'm only left with the replacement option. Thankfully, when I rotated it before, I realized I wasn't gonna be able to do that again. So I bought a new one at that time and it's been sitting in the parts drawer ever since waiting for this exact moment. Something else I purchased a while ago are these clear polycarbonate wheels. They've also been sitting in the parts drawer for a while, waiting for the time when I had to take the bed assembly completely apart. So as a mod, I want to replace the existing Delrin wheels with these polycarbonate ones. I've already done that on the x-axis and they're actually working really great. And while I'm replacing the wheels, I'm also replacing the spacers. The original stock spacers are nylon and most of them have mushroomed at the ends and have indentations in them where they've been ground into the bearings. This might be due to, let's call it, aggressive tightening. But regardless, it causes the spacers to spill out over the center race of the bearing and rub against the moving part. I don't know if that's detrimental to the print quality, but adding any potential friction to a part that should be moving freely can't be good, right? Anyway, my solution was to make spacers that were slightly smaller than the inner race of the bearing and um, maybe be a little less aggressive on the tightening. Lastly, and not part of the bed assembly, but I have these idler pulleys that I want to try out. The original pulleys are plastic and smooth, and these new pulleys are aluminum, and they have 20 teeth in them. At any rate, the original ones are a bit tired, and they're noisy, and they've developed a bit of a wobble, so I think that replacement was inevitable. So we'll give these a try. So to start with, I like to move the x-axis up and out of the way. First, I'll remove the build plate. This is the connector for the heated bed. I'll remove the zip tie that secures the wire to the connector. This is a very delicate piece and you want to be very careful when you remove it. It's very easy to damage the pins. Now I'll remove the leveling knobs and the heated bed itself and set it aside. I have the bed wire zip tied to the y-axis carriage to help prevent any strain on the connectors. It's attached to the y-axis stabilizer which I'll show later. I'll remove the six nylock nuts that hold the wheels and the Y stabilizer to the carriage plate and set that aside for now. I'll come back to this later. Now it's time to remove the damaged rail. First, I'll loosen the bolt that holds the T-nut on each end of the rail. It's not necessary to completely remove the bolt, just loosen it enough so the rail can slide. Then slide the old rail out Align the slot with the T-nut and slide the new rail in Align the front of the rail and tighten the T-nut on both ends don't forget that end cap. Here's the Y-axis stabilizer. 
It basically helps to hold everything together and make the Y-axis more uh, stable. I'll place a new spacer on each bolt. Then a new wheel on the four outside bolts and another spacer for those. The whole assembly is brought to the machine and installed on the rails. I'll add the center wheels and drop the eccentric nuts, making sure the collar of the nut is up. Bring over the carriage plate, align the bolts, and loosely put the nylock nuts on just enough to keep the bolts from dropping out. Once everything's in place, make sure the wheels are tracking in the slots or at least close. Then start the process of tightening the nuts. Be careful not to over tighten here, just enough to hold everything together and minimize wobble. Do any final adjustments using the eccentric nuts on the center wheels. Now I'll replace the idler pulleys. Here I'm swapping out the y-axis pulley. The new ones I'm installing here are actually different from the ones I showed earlier, which turned out to be too big. These are basically the same thing, just a bit smaller. Like the wheels, these also install with a nylock nut. The x-axis installs essentially the same as the y-axis. Remove the old pulley, install the new one, use nylock nut, and retension the belt. With all of the repairs and modifications made, it's time to reinstall the bed. Basically, just doing all of the things I did before, only this time in reverse. Well that takes care of the repair and the mods. All in all, it really only took about an hour from start to finish to do everything. 27 hours if you factor in the filming and the editing. At any rate, once everything was put back together, I did a manual bed leveling since I don't have auto bed leveling. And then I ran a few test prints just to make sure that the belts and the wheels were all tightened and working properly. It's a good idea to keep an eye on these things because the wheels and the belts are both wear items. I also recommend having a few spares on hand just in case something goes wrong. Then maybe even have a 2020 extrusion. That's going to wrap it up for this one. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. Or you can hit me up on Facebook or Instagram or Reddit or, you know, any of the social media. That's it for now. Keep 3D printing. We'll see you in the next one.